So we're edging closer to the Cheltenham Festival of 2020, which kicks off on March the 10th. And as you can see, the sun is shining today. The track is in magnificent condition. But one thing we can tell you here on Sky Sports Racing, we'll be bringing you all the news and all the views from some of the biggest names. Rivalry is the big key thing, though. Altior, of course, he was back to form last time. He will be a big threat. Oh, he's bound to be if he's his best. Of course he is, yeah. I mean, I suppose last season he looked as though he wanted further and then eventually they've gone back to two miles again this time. And, of course, Jacques and Boussois won very easy in Epistan last time, so he, he could be very much a danger as well. Do you feel Deffy's in a better place this year than he was last season? Uh, I mean, it all went pretty well last season as well. We won the Silly Isles last season at Sandown before he came here. So I wouldn't say he's in a better place, but he's in a very good place. Bristol de May, Gold Cup, 33 to 1. Um, you think he's overpriced? Is he absolutely spot on at the moment? Um, yeah, absolutely spot on. You know, I think he's overpriced, but then I, I'm not rich, <laughs> so I wouldn't know. But uh, you're a good you trainer. Know, <laughs> hopefully, um, you know, Santini. He was giving him. Bristol was giving him two pounds. He slipped to the bottom of the hill. He look, looked all over the winner, you know, in the Cotswold chase. So, so why has he forgotten the Santini favourite? Not sure. Mm. Definitely got an each way squeak, hasn't he? I mean, he was third last year. Absolutely. Yeah. No, really looking forward to it. Everyone seems to be talking at the moment after Kenton mm. about Solon. Yeah. Did he surprise you? I mean, has he shown a lot at home? He's shown plenty at home. He was obviously a very smart horse. It was a good, a good run in no toy, but you never know. He had to step up. Um, but, you know, I, sometimes those French horses do take a season to acclimatise or a run or two, but he was straight straight out there. I mean, I was a bit worried he was going right-handed, flat track at Kempton, completely opposite what he'd been used to going, left-handed, ran out tall, a different style of running and everything. So he adapted to that really, really well and obviously thrilled with the way he won. He's a, and he's a gorgeous yeah. model, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, well, you've seen him. He is a proper horse, yeah. Good, strong chasing sort. He did that well. And, I had to laugh, like, um, you know, he's got a mark of 157 for winning that, and that's high, made in the highest rated. And obviously, I quite how they come up with a mark, they must just invent them and just stick on £10 and what he had before. But, you know, he's not going to run a handicap, so it doesn't matter whether he's rated 150, 157, it's irrelevant. I remember back in the day, it took the Duke, David Nicholson, you know, years and years and years to get his first Cheltenham Festival winner. How important is a young trainer to get in the mix? Yeah, it's massive. It's the pinnacle of our sport. It's the Olympics. You want winners here, and to, to have my first winner this year would, would, would mean the world to me, and uh, we'll be keeping our fingers crossed, and we've, uh, we've a couple of darts to fire anyway. The best of yours, the one horse you think could be the one. <sighs> Very good. Go on, Ollie. Good I, th I think bringing up a storm is a massive chance in the Arco. And every year, someone says Minella Rocco, Minella Rocco, and they remember his big, big runs here in the past. Is there still hope for the Rocco? Yeah, there's definitely hope for him, Matt. He's, um, he's had two runs, two wins. He's had a lot of help, really. The, the two uh, main horses on the day haven't turned up in the races, but he can only beat what's there. He's jumped well, touch wood, he's jumping well. He's in great old form at home, and he'd probably be my best chance. Ben Pauling has a select team heading to Cheltenham Festival 2020. Very much headed in many ways for me by Global Citizen Ben, who was terrific at Kenton last time. And let's not forget, he was sort of bubbling under the surface of Cheltenham, sort of champion hurdle class as a hurdler. He's a pretty useful horse. Yeah, he is. He was, he just wasn't right this time last year, unfortunately, after having a good season. And he, he didn't turn up in the champion hurdle. But um, he's, he's had two runs this season, one when we weren't quite going the right way and obviously he was very good at Kempton and the form's been frank now so hopefully coming here fresh as a daisy will suit him well and uh, you know he could be quite exciting. He's one of those for me that when he is on top of his game there aren't many that can beat him it's just just getting that everything right on the day. Very much so you've hit the nail on the head if you if you have him spot on on the day uh, he's a very hard horse to live with um, early doors and he's got so much speed that you know that's quite a weapon in a two-mile chase, but um, he's in very good form at the moment, done some lovely work, so I'm, I'm happy with where we are. EHA Handicapper thinks if there is a horse to beat Paisley Park in the stairs hurdle, it will be Emmetom, and Emmetom is trained by this boy, uh, Warren Greatrix. That must be uh, music to your ears, at least the BHA Handicapper thinks you've got a good chance. Yeah, well, it's, it's a help, nice to know someone else thinks he might do. Yeah, so. Fingers crossed, he seems in good form, and we'll uh, we'll give it a shot. Really nice victory at uh, Haydock last time. Just showed he's right at the top of his game at the moment. 
Yeah, for sure. And, you know, it was frustrating before Christmas. You know, he had that blip and um, it was my error coming here in January. He, he had to come and I just had him underdone. And we had a good run from there to Haydock and he's come out of that race very well. And I was very impressed with him. He's probably the, out of all the runners in the race taken on Paisley Park. He's probably the least exposed. Well, he is the least exposed and we'll give it a good go. Vindication in great style with David Bass for the Kim Bailey Stable has won. Vindication's a horse who's unlikely to be hard on the bridle all the way round, but he's a talented animal and goes in the ultimate handicap chase. And, you know, he's always been that kind of animal you thought had a big win in him. Oh, I mean, he's, he, he won a £100,000 handicap at the beginning of the season. Um, he's missed that second half of the season because he had a, you know, had a bruise, a bone bruise. Um, he's worked very well this morning. He's, I'm really happy with him. Um, he'll carry top weight. Um, but his form is rock solid. And at the end of it, you know, we were disappointed we got beat at Sandown. Um, Deputy de Sir and Lost in Transaction were the two horses in finished in front of him, and they were only a couple of lengths. So, you know, on form, he would have a great chance. So, Alan King, so 15 Cheltenham Festival winners. He wants to make it 16. And I guess one horse who'd have a great chance is Edward Stone, who was a winner at Wincanton Aintree and then uh, a decent enough second at Haydock last time. He was. I mean, and he looked as if he's going to win at Haydock as well and just got run a little bit close home. But. Uh, He's come out of that well, and I'm very happy with the way he's going at home. So, you know, he could run well. Um, I don't think the ground matters to him too much. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah. What, do, what kind of horse is he for the future? Is he a sort of a chaser in the making, or is he a hurdler? What ward is he? Oh, no, he's a big strapping chasing type. He's a cave tower and a lot of size and scope. So, I mean, really, I know it's easy to say this is everything he's doing at the moment is a bonus, but it really could be. Um, he's, he's a very exciting horse.